Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedDraws.com, where music comes to life. And my guests today are part of an incredible collective of musicians that are about to do an unprecedented live event that will be premiering on YouTube on January, Saturday, January 15th. Both gentlemen are joining me from Germany, and those of you who have seen the show before probably know I'm on the east coast of the U.S. here in Connecticut. Leslie Mendoki is the mastermind of the Mendoki Soulmates. He's a tremendously talented producer, composer, musician, and band leader. My other guest has been one of my musical favorites for decades. Tony Carey was the keyboard player in the original version of Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, and he has also had a long and successful solo career, and he's a key part of the Soulmates. So welcome, Leslie and Tony. Hey. Hello. Thank you for having us. Oh, I mean, my pleasure. Uh, uh, a to pretty good we talk is always a great thing. <laughs> yeah. So, Leslie, let's start with this event on January 15th um, that'll be on YouTube. What can fans expect and who joined you in the Soulmates when you did this concert? Actually, um, we are living in this uh, very challenging um, uh, times of COVID. So um, the last two years, we were pretty limited in different parts of the world. We, are, we were limited uh, in different ways and affected in different ways. But in generally spoken, in, uh, in Central Europe, um, we are not able to go on stage for a good while, let's say mm -hmm. almost two years. Two years. And uh, in the last summer, in August, we just had a kind of a window of an opportunity. So um, that uh, in Hungary, where the... Uh, the virus was almost gone uh, totally and so we had a huge open area 30,000 people and uh, unfortunately the British part of the uh, again couldn't travel because they had uh, the, in the EU travel ban uh, but we had all the Americans with us so we had Richard Bona uh, the fabulous Richard Bona on, on bass and uh, he was singing and of course, Tony uh, uh, Carey was on Hammond and they were singing with me the whole show. And um, we had Aldi Mola on guitar. We had Mike Stern on guitar. We had Bill Evans on soprano and tenor saxophone. Um, we had the wonderful Randy Brecker on trumpet and flugelhorn. Uh, and of course, Till Brunner uh, was the most uh, uh, famous uh, German um, jazz musician of uh, nowadays uh, or since a good while it's a good, some great friends since 20 years with us um so this was actually the the, the basic band and uh, um and we had also a wonderful uh, a bandoleon uh, player uh from italy the fast so explain uh, what a bandoleon is because i didn't know <laughs> it's like an accordion it's like a, like a pirate ship accordion Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You this this got buttons on the side. I didn't know this either. He explained it to me. This this guy's Fausto. He's amazing on the thing. He mm. can't believe it. So excuse me, Larry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was really a, a, a wonderful moment of life because uh, you know uh, just to make a little fun because uh, when Tony carries with us, we always uh, kind of. Uh, uh, enjoy his a very American um, uh, humor. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you use it. So, um, for the swing around, uh, and uh, as even Tony doesn't know that part of the story, we had a wonderful sound check. You know, we all got together and we were sort of hungry to play uh, after all this break. And a uh, and, um, couple of uh, very well known. Hungarian superstars and the local promoter and the, and the record company was came up to me after the sound check and I said, Leslie, can we have a word with you? Uh, uh, you're just just kind of private word with you. I'm saying you came back to the city where you were born uh, uh, to finish your career. And I was looking strange to the guys and I said, because you are going to play three and a half hours, just new, new music, just fresh new music. And the people are dying to hear your old, you know, everybody's old hits and all this. And I said, I'm not a, a leader of a retro band. We we just create new, fresh music. And and what we really owe to our audience is uh, after this darkness of the COVID 
covered tunnel is just to light up the light at the end of the dark uh, tunnel and really give them something new, something fresh, uh, a reflection of the world of today and not of yesterday. Because, uh, uh, you know, the musician's life is about tomorrow and not about yesterday. So they were looking at me and I mean, they made very strange faces, but they made even much stranger faces after the, this, after the three hours. Uh, and and the, the three hours had only a couple of breaks where the people stood up and we had standing ovation uh, uh, middle of the show. Because of course, when, when uh, look, uh, Randy Bracker and, and uh, Richard Bona and Bill Evans are battling, or, or, or when uh, Tony Kemp, wonderful Hammond solo, or uh, Aldemar and uh, um, uh, Mike Sturz are battling, and, and we played really fresh new music, and the people loved it. It was such a great atmosphere, and they appreciated that we not, you know, uh, we went back and we played our, what about 20 years, 25 years mm -hmm. old stuff, and we just uh, came up with absolutely fresh new ideas, which are actually answering the questions of the days. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned going back a bit, and the Soulmates have been around since 1992. What originally yes. led you, you know, your career had been going on before that, but what originally led you to bring this collection of talent together? Um, the answer is pretty simple. Um, actually, uh, I always was trying to follow um, what my father said, to live my dreams and don't dream my life. And uh, originally, I escaped communism. I, I sat in a refugee camp uh, when the American resettlement officer was asking me, hey, boy, B, I really understand that you left communism, but what is your idea? What is your vision? What is your dream? What are you going to do here? And I said, I would like to play with Ian Hans and of Jeff Trudeau, Jack Bruce of Cream and Aldi Meola. And he said, OK, you must be a total crazy. Um, and then uh, the, the friend of mine who was sitting next to me, he was a cartoonist and he's a cartoonist and um, as a, as a, uh, and he was asked by the same resettlement officer, I was saying, what are you having on mind? He said, oh, I'm, a, you know, I'm an animator, I'm a cartoonist and I would like to go to Hollywood and, and you know, uh, do my thing there because I have a lot of ideas. His first uh, uh, series of films were Simpsons. Uh, and their regrets. Uh, so we, we had a sort of, we had a vision, we had an idea about life. And uh, that's what we came for to live that. And Tony, how did you first get involved with Leslie and become part of the Soulmates? Uh, I'd like to preface this with saying that a three hour Soulmates concert is only about five songs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I met, I don't even remember how I met Leslie. I've known Leslie for 25 years, longer. And we have a mutual friend uh, uh, that has a studio next to Leslie's. And I used to play here. His band, I used to produce him. I just kind of drifted into it about, well, I think 2006, Leslie, 2005. It's something like that, yeah. Something like that. I don't even remember. And all of a sudden I was there. And uh, we had... Oh man, we've been doing, how long has that been? 17 years, 16 years? Yeah, something like 20, 20 years, something like that. All kinds, with this revolving door of fascinating people. I mean, we did a gig with a Spice Girl. And this is great <laughs> shit. I love this stuff. Melanie C, yeah. <laughs> we were on stage with Liza Minnelli. Wow. I mean, all, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, that just wild stuff for an old rocker. And and then the, the first of all, there's these jazz guys, there's, there's, uh, the old school, like uh, Mike Stern, Randy Brecker, Bill Evans, uh, Till Brunner, and others. And then there's the old school rock, Jack Bruce. Hey, come on, you know, I was, a, I was 11 years old when the cream came out, or 14 or whatever, I'm old. And uh, those guys are my heroes too. John Lord, yeah. who I, in one way or another, replaced, yeah. was, was in the band. And... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, I don't even remember it. It wasn't even that formal. Leslie said, come on by, we're doing this thing. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was that easy, I don't know. And uh, uh, I said, oh, I can never learn the lyrics. He says, don't worry, we can we pitch that and we have some tricks to mm -hmm. get the lyrics. And it took a while to, to learn the songs and there was all these great people around, so I just never stopped. Mm -hmm. Plus the hotels are good and the catering's good, always. It, that's important. That's really important, <laughs> yeah. Food always comes first. 
it, you know, with that kind of background in place, um, we have Utopia for Realists, the Hungarian Pictures record, which came yeah. out uh, earlier. Oh, well, actually, I forgot we're in a new year now, which came out last year around September. And, and that's a true merging of art and music. And you've just developed this musical suite around themes of Bela Bertók. Talk a little bit about Hungarian pictures and what it is and how all of you are involved with it. Oh, it's a kind of simple th story. Um, um, we played about 16, 17 years ago, uh, some shows where Peter Frampton was playing guitar in a band. Uh, Jack Booth played bass and singing. Uh, John Lord was playing the Hammond. And Greg Lake was playing the second guitar and Ian Anderson was with us and, and Bobby Kimball, Chris Thompson. And uh, it turned out to be the 50 Years of Rock show. And um, Mihal Gorbachev was with us to, just to prove that rock music turned down the wall. And um, actually, Greg Lake came up to me and he said, uh, well, you know, let's say, what is your connection emotionally to Bila Bato, being a Hungarian boy? And I said, well, I mean, Bila Bato is our, you know, national hero uh, is untouchable and and, I, and he told me that but you probably never heard before that amazon lake and palmer was not planning to play um the, the um, uh, pictures of like exhibition but they were uh, trying to uh, create out of hungarian pictures of bila Bartok, a, a rock uh, uh, suite but they couldn't get the rights and they were not free back then. So, uh, and I couldn't get it either. So, so John Lord and myself um, and a bit Greg Lake, we, we just, you know, sat down and made some little uh, sketches. I mean, that could be if one day we may can hold up the, uh, um, the rights and, um, and we, we could never make it uh, because the, the um, grandchildren of Bill Abato were not. You guys there? Uh, we just came together in, in, the, in the studio here and uh, and uh, we were just diving into that uh, kind of music and, and we kept on writing uh, the songs to it, you know, that are some folk songs, some, some very classical uh, uh, pieces and uh and we of course we wrote a couple of stuff and and we made it to a rock uh suite of uh actually an hour or 72 minutes and and um and we we were digging down deeper and deeper and more emotional uh in the whole music and uh actually we gave the to the whole thing through the lyrical context but what we were adding to it um we, we got another dimension because um, actually, lyrically, it's just trying to answer of uh, the questions of our days, you know, that we are living in the gap, we're living in this social media uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, bubbles and uh, echo chambers, and uh, we are in the comfort zones, and we're just echoing back our own opinion from everywhere. So sort of um, that's, that, that was actually the idea to, to write about the generational uh, situation. That's why the last song, which is... Uh, perfect for a radio, The Torch, which, which is, uh, uh, was a, an excellent collaboration with Tony uh, from bringing it across also now and on the stage again, not only in the studio. Uh, is it just, you know, uh, it's, it's saying everything what a father would like to tell to his kids about our life uh, and, and in a way that this torch should be the, uh, you know, the light, uh, what we are lighting up at the end of the COVID tunnel. And, and that's why I think it was right to give to the people uh, new, fresh music and, and uh, new, fresh messages about old rebels and young rebels, about the turn to wind and, uh, and uh, very personal moments of life, but also very general, uh, because music is the greatest unifier. And, and I think uh, this, is, this is the message in a divided society, what we need to spread around that. Uh, and if you look at the Soma, its own stage, uh, you know, we are from everywhere. 
and uh, but we are united uh, uh, in in spirit, uh, and that's that's why we uh, actually are a perfect example that yes, music is the greatest unifier. Jeff, you're, you're muted. Don't quite know how that happened. <laughs> so you're a guy that has, you know, you're an amazing writer. You have a long catalog of your own work. What's your thought when Leslie comes to you with a suite of music based on, you know, these Hungarian folk themes? Is there any convincing you or? No, no, you hell like, yes. I'm let's all in. No, no, let's do it. Whatever yeah. it is. If it's different, I want to do it. I mean, if you are familiar with my catalog, you know, I really never did repeat myself. I right. only played, I only played hard rock once mm -hmm. with Richie. Uh, I did a couple of rock albums and then I did Planet P Project with his dystopian science fiction. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've never, I've tried never to repeat myself, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing. If I repeated <laughs> myself, I'd be, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be on my boat in uh, Fiji <laughs> fishing. But whatever, I've, I've I've tried to always 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 mix it up and 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 keep things different. So when he came with his idea, first thing I said was you're crazy, mm. and then which is, oh, I'm tell, I tell him that a lot. No, that won't work. You're nuts. But you know, talk me into it, which he didn't have to do. <laughs> yeah, you know me. Anyway, <laughs> it, we the studio was was actually wild because we did we did a lot of the. I did a lot of the, 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 the I take Leslie's poetry and, and turn them into song forms, his words, but the phrasing, he wants it in, in good English. Mm -hmm. You've noticed I speak really good English. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was great, great sessions. But every time I came back to the studio, it, there'd be more. We'd live about four hours apart. We don't live mm -hmm. in the same town. So I'd come down on the train and stay a few days and, and, and either sing or uh, hang out and, and see what was going on. And I watched this thing develop. And I knew in the studio, I didn't hear the, actually, I didn't hear the very, very final mix until right at the end, but I knew in the middle, this is something very, very special mm -hmm. because it mixes, it mixes really extreme classical. Uh, Bartok's not one of your simple guys. He's not Mozart, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's not, he's very avant-garde and his themes are, kind of breathtaking, a little bit nuts, a little bit crazy, difficult to play. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's not easy stuff. And then in the middle of that, it will mix it with an absolutely gorgeous rock ballad or, 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 or a, a mid-tempo rock thing. And, uh, hey, I, and when we, when we were done, I said to this guy, I said, this is pretty good. And I don't say, <laughs> I, I don't say that all the time. I really don't. I've, I've, done uh, a couple of hundred records that uh, I've either done myself or produced. And so is Leslie, he's produced for all kinds of people. And we both thought, this is actually pretty, pretty good. So <laughs> unusual thing. Well, that's why kind of on its face, it shouldn't work because there's this mix of, you know, Br very British Prague, American jazz, Hungarian folk, all melded into this brand new Thing with these yeah. incredible people playing it and it, it's worked for you through Europe I mean you guys have played some huge shows and actually here's the record it is out now yeah, not just not not just Europe we played in Africa we played in South America yeah. Leslie's played in China I wasn't there I couldn't I was doing mm -hmm. something else but we he'd been in Russia we've been in Russia We've been around the world with this shit, but yeah. And, and this is sort of the introduction for the American audience. Yes, yes. You yes, know, yes. kind of is this record and the event yeah. on the 15th. I mean, I, what I found, especially talking to people from all over the world, is that a lot of time American audiences seem to need that silo, whereas, you know, other parts of the world are kind of more open to new things. I, you know, do you, where do you kind of see this going? And do you ever think that should the world open up again, that you could bring a version of the soulmates here and do some shows in the U S love to, hmm. I mean, of course, and hmm. uh, in the right town, in the right venue, hmm. probably a college town, <laughs> or a town with a lot of intellectuals. I mean, we're not going to play Mississippi with this. I, I don't right. think, but uh, the right town and the right circumstances, we would love, I know we'd love to. And, hmm. and, 
Absolutely. We're, work, we're working on it. And I mean, the point is with the soulmates, we could play anywhere because as soon as everybody's in the room, it's not like we take us a, a half a day to get like excited. Everybody's excited when they walk in. It just happens immediately, just immediately. And everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a great time. No egos, none. Mm-hmm. And you'd expect some pretty heavy egos going yeah. on. Absolutely none. Everybody's having a blast. So it's, all you got to do is basically put between 12 and 30 people of this eclectic club in the same room where everybody knows you can hear what's going on and, and the party's on. And it's the party starts. So we'd like to play. I think anybody that, that, that hears it and sees it, for, it's, it's, it's very visual. It sees how much fun we're having is going to like it. Mm-hmm. Now, you might not get your, your TikTok video fans. And I don't particularly care. They're mostly my, most of them are my grandchildren. But uh, uh, to anybody that is, 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 is interested in, in, in challenging music, and this is challenging, or maybe it's a gas, and we have so much fun doing it, it's just, it's infectious. And Leslie, you've managed to bring together just some of the greats throughout the world in music. You said from jazz, you mentioned people like Randy Brecker and, you know, vocalists like Ian Anderson and Bobby Kimball and just some of the musicians that you've gotten are incredible. Has there ever been, you know, sort of that one person where you're like, I want to work with this person in the soulmates that you just haven't had a chance to reach out to yet? Uh, not uh, actually the dream is alive so uh, you know uh, everybody's in place uh, no one left ever uh, so um, unless to heaven uh, and um, so no I think we, we got the right people you know uh, because uh, this is just as Tony was expressing, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm an Eastern European guy who's always a bit over emotional. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, what should I say? You have Ali Maul and Mike Stern on guitar. What else you would like to have in your life? You know, so, so, uh, so then, then, you know, not much, you know, uh, left to wish, you know, uh, or you have Randy Brecker and Theo Brunner on trumpet, you know, uh, I mean, the number ones on both sides of the ocean. I mean, what, 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 what you know, so that there is not much left to, to say, okay, I'm missing what? Uh, so there, there is, a, and this is the one side of it. The other side, you know, we really became soulmates. Uh, uh, so this is uh, like marriages happened during these 30 years and kids were born. We, uh, you know, they know each other and uh, we, we were partying and ha- great hangs here by the lake and on, out on the road and, and having Thanksgiving in, in New York together or, or, you know what, so so this is so many uh, or uh, great times in LA or, or the right recently in Miami and with Richard Bona or, you know, so this, uh, there's this so great, you know, it's a lot of things, you know, uh, talking about life in general, you know, uh, how to raise kids and, uh, and about, uh, also we are all kind of political in, and not, not in a, in a sense of party politics, but in the, polit- uh, in the sense of, um, what is a, you know, but as a musician, you have a sort of responsibility because the people are listening. And this is such a, the most wonderful thing that the people are coming to our shows and allowing us into their life. And they are in our life. And this, this makes you responsible, uh, um, you know, and, and we are living in a challenging world and, and are so many uh, questions where the answer is not so obvious. And, and we are living in a divided society. And and uh, Tony and myself, we are in the same age, and we we were born and gr- we were growing into a kind of very simple life. You know, it were one of the uh, and the east were the evil part, and we were the good people. And uh, we just have to find the right tunnel to uh, to change the uh, from east to west. In my case, and you became a refugee, but it's not that simple anymore. Uh, you know, and uh, we, today we are. Um, celebrating the 15th of the birthday of iphone and the, this this you know this changed our life mm-hmm. in, in in many ways and uh, just this morning Your I life just, 
Uh, uh, yeah. uh, You're Tony, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tony is smart. Tony, is, uh, Tony is not only a great talent, but he's uh, really intelligent. So, so, uh, so this 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 shows, yeah. yeah. And so and um, and you know, it's just, um, how, how should I say? Uh, uh, Fifteen years ago, it's, it's a device uh, uh, was uh, you know introduced to the world, um, where but but created. Uh, that you see now the families and everybody's around the table on the thing, you know, and we just trying to do the opposite of that. Hmm. We're trying to, uh, uh, to, to take this attention span uh, and, and, and trying to say something. And when I'm saying this is political, as is, as, 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 as probably the better world would be, uh, we are human. Uh, we are kind of analog. Uh, uh, so this, uh, so we are just, uh, we are not running into formats. So I'm still uh, trying to um, follow what uh, an old um, teacher in the conservatory was saying to me, who was actually attending now on that show, what we are going to show mm-hmm. on Sunday. Uh, um, he's about 85 and he was just playing an introduction. And, and such so he said to me, as I was a young boy and, uh, and, and I was just starting to study music. And he said, uh, boy, oh boy, be aware of the balance of form and content. And that's what the it's so much about artistically. So this is a, um, I, as I was 19, I said, okay, uh, I'm so much, I'm so heavily attracted by, by the British uh, prog rock in a way that, that lyrically, the political, the social content, then the way the compositions are so complex and and the songs are long complex pieces and uh, compositions are great and the production will use well, wonderful. Um, but I was at the same time, uh, uh, I was very attracted by the uh, soloistical brilliance uh, and the virtuosity of the American jazz rock guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I said, okay, uh, once in a lifetime, a guy should come along who is merging this both. Uh, you know, the prog rock, the, the intellectual uh, musical aspect uh, of the prog rock, but the phenomenal, fundamentally brilliant soloistical uh, uh, virtuosity of the American jazz rock. So they're here for uh, Ian Anderson and Jack Bruce on one side, and and uh, Ali Maul and Mike Stern, and Randy Brecker and Bill Evans on the other side. So this this makes sense. And then then to add a, a meaningful uh, kind of mature, kind of sophisticated uh, lyrical content to it, which is uh, uh, you know that uh, you don't no one has to be agree with it. But that we are incredibly uh, self critical. But uh, uh, we Tony and myself, we were just young kids. When, when Woodstock was happening and Woodstock was teaching us, there was a learning and, um, and uh, uh, we were trying to go on that path. And uh, when Mikhail Sagavich Garbage of the early, uh, the, uh, the Soviet Union's president of the Soviet Union um, was telling us here in the studio, said, guys, I mean, prog rock uh, and jazz rock was tearing down the wall. In Berlin, you know, so that there was the soundtrack. So this is the soundtrack of it. So, so we are playing a kind of music which is 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 uh, uh, it's not not to sing along, it's not not to clap along, it's not not easy to take, uh, but it's probably the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, we all know that that a lot of things went wrong in the last couple of years, and uh, this COVID this is just a test of character for the society, for individuals, for groups, those were soulmates. And uh, uh, and I think think we have to make some turnarounds in a society. We we see it. Uh, the environment problems are um, easy to see. Uh, mm-hmm. This is very visible, but there are a lot more. Uh, and um, and uh, I think uh, we created here the soundtrack to to rethink a couple of things. Uh, for the children, you were just mentioning that you're playing, that your daughter playing piano and you're playing guitar. Mm-hmm. So we have a huge responsibility. Uh, um, you know, we have kids. Uh, everybody has uh, kids in the band. You know, so we have a responsibility, and that's why we sing about old rebels, what we are, um, and uh, and about young rebels as as our children, and uh, and we do believe that uh, 
the challenges are so tremendous uh, that only the old rebels together, jointly, uh, with the young rebels can turn the wind. Uh, and we just hold this torch, you know, that uh, stay young, stay hungry, stay brave, uh, uh, and, and, you know, take on the torch. Uh, that, that's, uh, this is actually the message of this utopia for realists, because uh, to overcome this, uh, all, all what we are facing right now, probably we are the only, the first generation without the war, that we are passing over the, to the next generation one day or the world in a much worse shape than we, we got it from our parents. Uh, and so, so, uh, so, so what can we do as songwriters and musicians as go on a stage and we have, as, as Tony was describing in a way that I, I couldn't do any better, that we have incredibly joyful fun together, but we feel the responsibility that there's a cause why the people are listening to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, and the Budapest, as we were played this really complex music. And uh, at the end of this long, long, uh, complex suite, I said, um, I would like to give you a message uh, that you should take home. And you could, you know, uh, and I spoke Hungarian to the, to the 30,000 people. So. And I said, look, uh, learn that if someone is having the oppositional opinion of yours, it's not, not your enemy, just another person who sees the world with a different eyes or a different point of view. So just go and have a beer together. Mm -hmm. It's not your yeah. enemy. Uh, uh, and just talk and discuss. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, but don't hate. Mm -hmm. um uh, you know let's go back to woodstock you know uh, uh and and uh, and this is our message so we are we lived our life uh tony and the rest of the gang and we are even some states somehow uh, tony and myself are the younger ones mm -hmm. and uh and uh, and but of course we have really young like my daughter mm -hmm. and um and uh richard and Corey and all this but um so it's, uh, um also till brother what i'm trying to say is there is a there is a message behind complex music mm -hmm. but your music this is our responsibility that's why we call it utopia for realist because the answer is an utopia but that's not a dream it's just a, right. uh, we have to turn it to reality for the kids mm -hmm. this is our responsibility we've been spending some time here today with the amazing leslie mendoki and with tony carey of the mendoki soulmates the record is out now, Utopia for Realist, Hungarian Pictures. And on January 15th, they will be premiering. Oh, even better. You have vinyl. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. You notice it's not open. I don't have a record player, but yeah. there's that, the vinyl. That's awesome. Yeah. They'll be premiering the live concert experience on January 15th on YouTube. If you're watching this on the main misplacedraws.com website, just below this interview will be a link to get you into that live show. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening on the podcast, go to the main website, misplacedraws.com, and the link will be there so that you could experience this on Saturday, June 15th. Leslie, Tony, thank you guys so much. It, it really has been an honor just spending some time with you. And I look forward to doing this again sometime. And, and hopefully when the world clears up, we can get you back here in the States. Thank you well, so much for having us. Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, I hope that this, uh, we see each other uh, live very soon. And uh, I don't even need a visa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Tony, any chance of any solo shows or stuff coming up soon for you? You know what? I had I had a, a tour booked for April and May, mm -hmm. supporting an act I won't mention because it didn't happen, but a great act. And I was going to open for them because it's been a long time since I've been in the States. And of course, it fell flat because of because of mm -hmm. COVID. So I'm taking it one weekend at a time, basically. I, I, we're lucky. Uh, the soulmates are booked uh, primarily in November this year, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, like twenty-five times, and that's fantastic because I think by November we'll we'll be re ready to go. Till the summer, I'm just taking it as it comes. I hope to see it. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great you day. You guys are welcome. Bye. Thank you.